Hi everyone, Sandy Smith here from Cameras and Canines Fine Photography, where I teach you better tips and tricks to become the photographer that I know you already are. If you've tuned in today, then you're already a photographer because I think that every single person in the world has a different view on how to see the world. So anything you capture is unique just to you. And then for those people that want to take it a step further, maybe do it professionally, or you just want to create better memories, uh, not better memories, you want to preserve your memories at a higher quality, you want to learn how to edit your photos, great. Today's video, I'm going to import, I haven't even looked at them yet, so you're going to see the raw images just as I'm seeing them, and then we're going to pick one or two to edit. So I've got my memory stick here, I have my SanDisk, um, memory card reader because I have a Mac Pro so I don't have um, some people might have a drive right in your laptop or your computer where you stick the memory stick or you might have a cord that attaches from your phone or from your from your camera to your computer this is just the method I use that's easy for me but all of them are perfectly acceptable so I'm inserting this and then I will get rid of the my recordings on the screen Oh wait, that's upside down. There you go. Now, I'm just learning how to use this screen, screen sharing software. Um, so Lightroom for me was a game changer. Because I am mostly self-taught or I purchased courses, like some of you may have purchased some of mine, I sort of learned as I went. And certain things that are now I call my photography superpowers simply happened because I didn't know there was other ways. So I forced myself to learn everything I could about Lightroom because I know my just a label but classified ADD brain would have trouble collecting or keeping all these files. Like if you look here, I've got 107,000 photos on here. If somebody wanted to find a photo from two years ago or hey remember that time there was like trees with the pink flowers or whatever I was like I don't know how I'm ever going to keep track of this so I put a lot of time and effort into learning these things and I try to keep as up to date as I can however there's always things that change and things that can be better so if you know different tips in Lightroom or editing and you would love to share them with us please do down below because I'd love to learn from other people it's true somebody said who said that does anybody know comment that too Somebody said that sometimes you're the teacher and sometimes you're the student, and I'm a big believer in that. So let's get started here. I'm going to go down to import. Now this assumes that you already have a base level of Lightroom. Maybe you've taken one of my courses or maybe you already know Lightroom. If you don't, there'll be a link down below uh, where you can purchase um, a course to get you started and to help you understand it instead of sort of fumble through it, but really use it to make your life, your workflow and your memories so much more effective and streamlined. Trust me. <laughs> so I'm selecting a source. No, oh, no, I'm not. Let's see. Maybe I didn't push the memory card in far enough. And it should pop up right up here. I'll make sure I plugged it in correctly at the other side. I just pulled it out of my drawer. So let's see here. <laughs> of course, in a live video, this is the first time this has happened. <laughs> there we go. And there we go. <gasps> like magic. So here we are. It shows up here. This was from my Nikon shot of my Nikon D750. There's actually two days of photos on this drive here. Oh yes, the dandelions are so beautiful. So I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to add this to a clue. There's a lot of variety here. I don't normally let two shoots stay on one card because it confuses me after. Hmm. Let's let it do its thing for a moment here. Oh, beautiful sun ray there. Good. All right. So I'm going to add this to collection. Yep, I'll do that. I'm going to rename my files. There's another video on why I do that. Uh, 
I'm going to call this live. No, I won't. Doesn't matter if it's live. The name should be accurate. Um, dogs and I let the I know. Hello. Cameras and canines in K country. Sounds like canines and K country, but it's actually a K, but it still sounds like alliteration. Cameras and canines in Canna Nascus, which we call K country. Image, spot my numbering. I do this a little more meticulously if it's for, um, say, um, a commercial client or something that I need to post on social media as an image because there's certain metadata I like to embed to make it more searchable on Google and things like that. And that's more um, for social. I'm just like, look at this. It's like I just put on this amazing stuff I love that hydrates my skin so well and it's so pure. It's um, African shea butter, shea butter, shea butter. And I'm just noticing here in the video, it like glares. When I do um, fashion shoots or models, it's something that's a big problem. You always have to have like blotters and things to get that off. But if you forgive me, I'll let it, I'll let it go. I'm going to put in some keywords. So I see summer, my dog, and it's also summer. So it works two ways. Um, it's a whole video or maybe five in itself about keywords. So I'm not going to explain that in this video, but you can definitely look at my video titled keywords what is the key takeaway or something like that so here we go summer mm -hmm. light bending that's something i call when i see these um like here you go see these like sun flares there which is what i was trying to do in those images like light orbs. Um, and then I was trying to get her to shake with that behind it because then it would like refract all the effects everywhere. Um, what else is in there? Okay, forest, which I did for, um, there's a gallery in Canmore, Art Country Canada. Love you guys who carry my work and they love photos of forest with beautiful light in it because who doesn't? Because forest, beautiful light are beautiful. And they make us feel good. They raise our vibration. So people like to buy them and put them in their house. Um, what else do I have in here? Yeah, there we go. Um, I could put, oh, forget me not pond. That's that location there. And that's it. That's all. Mm, I might not put that. Yeah, it's okay. Yep. Yeah. Those match, good to go. There we go. Now, while these load, um, typically I would just start with an edit already on the screen. I just thought it may be fun to show you the full process or give you a refresher if you've taken one of the Lightroom courses or if you already know Lightroom or if you're just really curious to see my entire process. And then you're seeing that these are absolute raw images. You're seeing my full edit on them. I have no secrets. I don't believe in hiding uh, knowledge. I love to share it. And when I'm teaching photography or helping other people discover their inner photographer, I find the most satisfaction by seeing your photos. And if they're, I, I don't think you can really quantify what's a better photo or less better photo. They're just different perspectives. But if I see somebody's photo that I'm like, whoa, and I get photo envy, I'm like, whoa, I wish I took that photo then I know my job was well done and that's where I get my satisfaction. So please share your photos with me. I'm also going to do, if it's something that you enjoy, I'm going to do videos where I'll edit your photos for you and show you what I would do with them. Again, no right or wrong, just what I would do. And let's see here, let's, we'll start editing. We'll maybe do two, we'll do a dog one and then a forest one, or maybe I will split it into two videos, we'll see. Um, I tend to take, I like to take less photos than more because why wouldn't I? Um, I'm a little bit lazy. Well, I'm very much not lazy, but I'm lazy at, I, I like to do things efficiently, let's say. So that's a pretty light fair, fair, but I don't really love the way her head's turned away. It makes her head look small. 
This is the opposite direction. That's funny. Look at the drool hanging out of her mouth. Oh, I like this light up here. And I'm going to go up and check my histogram here. Yeah, I haven't blown out any highlights, as you can see here. Oh, wait a minute. What just happened there? What just happened there? Hang on. What's happening? We're thinking about something. And my histogram just changed. Everybody see that up here in the corner here? Now see where that spinny thing is? That's the weirdest thing. My histogram just totally changed. This actually looks more like I expected it when I was actually really surprised when I first looked and saw no peaking highlights there because to me, this looks like peaked highlights, which is why you can see down here, I took it in different exposures because I was trying to focus on the light flare. Oh, this is very strange. Hmm, okay. Ejected the card, perfect, done. Hmm, okay, well, anyways, so that's a nice option. Um, the perspective in this photo is a little weird. Like her bum looks very unfortunately big. Not that I'm judging. I'm not bum shaming her. I'm just saying, perspectively, it's not a very flattering photo. Oh, this one I like because the light red, the sun rays or light orbs are right over top of her leading down to her. And she's like making a funny face. I'm going to look up at my, there are some blown out highlights there, but unless I was bracketing a shot, it, I, I sort of expected that to happen. Ooh, and then look at this pretty color down here. So I'm going to mark that as one that we'll do either right now or in another video. Oh, that one too I like. Look at the drool coming out of her mouth. This dog, I swear, I have no idea how she does it. There was a children's book that I read that, or that I used to read or that used to be read to me when I was a kid. And it was something about somebody looked outside and a mud puddle jumped on her. And her mother would say, how did you get so dirty? And she'd say, the mud puddle attacked me. And it was like, ha ha, because really she was out playing in the puddles. Um, or maybe the, maybe there actually was like a big mud monster. Does anybody remember the name of that book? I'm going to try to find it after. But anyways, that's what Summer is like. She's half Newfoundland dog and half, so her father is Newfoundland and her mother was half Great Pyrenees, half Mastiff. So she's a big floopy drooly dog but this dog loves dirt like she's just not quite happy unless most of her white is black or brown and i feel like she's like that character in the book where she just looks outside and everything becomes instantly dirty it's crazy oh i like this how you can see all the like spray coming out of her mouth oh drooly old semi that's very pretty. I would crop it here and put in nicer clouds probably, but I like the exposure on her. That's beautiful. Forget me not ponds. And she's swimming. Yay. Okay. These are fun to edit usually. Let's see. Don't like that perspective at all. What was I using? 35 millimeter lens. Oh yeah. For anybody that doesn't know up here are my camera settings. So I know um, in workshops or in other things, I'm very new to YouTube, but I, in other things, people often ask what my camera settings are. You're always more than welcome to look there. I'll never hide them. Um, so you can always check them out. Although if you've done uh, a lot of exposure courses or photography courses, you realize you can sort of look at settings to get an idea of something, but you can't just go mimic them and get the same results because the light could change in the span of five minutes and you'd need totally different settings to get the same results. So keep that in mind as well. Um, that's funny. Let's zoom in on this one. Oh, what did I just do? Let's go back here. Come on. I'm getting used to using a Wacom tablet, which looks like this. And um, it's like a, it's like a giant mouse. Now you don't need this to edit photos. It makes it a lot easier, trust me. But for the first three years, I did not use one. I used my finger and this that came with my Mac. So don't feel like you need to rush in and buy it to get the same results, because you don't. But if it's in your budget and you would like one, and, or if you do a lot of editing. OK, 
Okay, let's take one like this. Okay, so I'm in library. I'm going to go to develop and I'm going to go to single image. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. My computer's running very slowly today. I don't, as most of you know, if you've watched my workflow videos or how to organize your files as a photographer with an ADHD or ADD photographer like me. Um, I always get those two terms mixed up. Anyways. Oh, hmm. I, um, I totally lost that train of thought while I was talking about the ADD. Amazing. Okay, let's get started editing here. So I tend to start at the top and work my way down. The first thing I'll always do is check if my horizon is straight, if there's a horizon in the photo. That one's pretty close. Oops, I was being mindful that day, which was the day before yesterday. You might have seen me going to film it in my stories. That was the day. Um, now, all this white space up here, boring. I don't need it. Does nothing for the composition, does nothing for the story. And she's a little too centered for my taste. Now, an exception to that would be as if it if this was going to be for an ad or somebody wanted to use it for a feeling shaken or whatever the ad is, this space up here would be good for copy. But we're not using it for an ad. We just want a cute picture of our dog today. So that's why I'm cropping it out. And again, she's a little too centered, but I almost don't mind it in this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play with it. Watch. Let's go like this. I'm going to see how she looks off center. So I'm going to go like this. And then you don't really get a whole lot of perspective of the mountain, which is okay. Maybe you want that. Maybe you don't. I kind of like this. And then the drools flying off that way. Yeah, we're going to do that. Done. Now I'm going to check my white balance and my color profile. If you don't know about color profiles, go watch a video about it. Um, purchase a course. Uh, I don't have a course for sale about that, but color management is really important. Creative Live has some great ones. Um, or you can search color management for photographers or something like that. And I'm going to, I want these like rays or dots of um, water to be more visible. So I'm going to play around that by doing it, by lowering the highlights, hoping that the highlights around it sort of, mm, that did a little bit. Um, I'm going to up the shadow so we can see her better. Okay, there we go. We're getting there. I don't love the water droplets in this one. What was my aperture? 2.5. They're a little wishy-washy. But let's see here. Um, oh, yeah, that's very yellow and very hot spots. I'm not a videographer, and I'm using this webcam. Um, it's I've only had it for two days. Oh, yeah, and like, look at the hot spot on my arm here. That's blown out highlights. So you see up here. Oh, wait. That's not how you do it. Up here in the histogram. And I said earlier I was checking for blown out highlights. This is what a blown out highlight looks in a picture where it's so overexposed. It looks like a glare and there's no information. Like if I move my arm around, we should be able to get rid of it there. See? Oh, no, there. So there's too much light coming from somewhere. Very yuck. That does not look good as a photographer. Like if I was taking photos, that would just never happen. Um, but again, I'm brand new to video and I find it a little terrifying, especially since I can't control the exposure and the aperture of this webcam that I'm talking to you in. And normally I'm, I am in control of every aspect. So I'm going to have somebody help me sort that out. Maybe I'll buy a course about it now. Mm, I'm now feeling like I'm trying to fix a photo that I'm not really digging it that much, to be honest. I'm going to go up here. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to go up and I'm going to click on dehaze. Oops, that's clarity. Dehaze. I'm going to try to dehaze around her face. I'm going to make this a bit bigger. And... Oh yeah, it is a bit, but this is a pretty average photo. Let's move on. Oh, cute. We have this cutie wild horse that was going down the road as I was heading home. Wild horses are amazing. Let's go to one of the forest pictures. 
edit that, you can see here, I was, I'll show you, I was stacking images. So I'll do a different video on that, but that's basically setting your camera to a bracketing. It might be called BKT, which is bracketing, a, a short form for bracketing, where you're like, bang, 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 taking three, five, seven, ten shots, whatever it is, at, at increasing or decreasing exposures. And then you can stack them so you're getting more detail and you're not getting those blown out highlights or shadows. Now, I'm not going to do this video as a stacking video. I'm just going to grab one of these images and show you how I would edit it. That one has a lot in shadow. I don't mind that. Look at one more here. I like the pink light flare on that. I love those. Oh, yeah, that's beautiful. And it's crooked. So, yeah, let's edit this. We're going to go up here. Start at the top and always straighten. I can't say always straighten. You have your artistic license to do whatever you want, but I prefer something straightened. And when I see a picture that's kind of off, that's one of the things I always look at when I'm critiquing other people's photos, not to be critiquey, but because people want me to, because it's very valuable. I love having my own photographs critiqued. Um, is I think to myself, you know, is this happening? Is that happening? Why am I not connecting to this image? And that is definitely something that is quite common and quite often the case is that the horizon is off kilter. And you would maybe not notice that if you were looking at an, an image, but psychologically, it would slightly turn you off. So there we go. I'm not going to crop it. I shot it exactly sort of how I wanted it. Now you see here, this is quite hot or highlighty and a lot of it's in shadow, which is why I, I shot it in multiple exposures. But um, it's going to be good. So let's get started here. I'm going to go to Adobe Standard. Mm, I This image might be good with contrast, but I tend to like my own images less contrasty which sort of goes against goes against the grain of what most people like and prefer, but it's just, I have to be true to what my own eyes like, which is not like saying this, I like my images kind of cooler and the statistically images that are warmer, get more views, get more purchases, things like that. But it's just not what my eye likes. I like cool and sort of, yeah, like I don't like, I like a bright cherry red. I don't like burgundy things like that. Uh, so I've gone down with my highlights. I'm going to go up with my shadows, see how much detail I recover that way. Oh yeah, I like that. That's cool. Very cool. Um, still looks a bit crooked to me. No, I'm not. I am going to... Hmm. You might like it with a bright exposure like that, like, oh, good morning, hello. Oh, look at that. When my hand gets closer to you, how big it looks. I have giant hands. Anyways, whatever, here's a tip for you. Whatever is closest to the camera looks biggest. So say you're a woman and you have your self-conscious about your stomach or something. Whatever is closest to the camera, like here, let's make this very unflattering. Like if I have an arm sort of close to the camera, my arm looks quite large. Um, yeah, so my arm is actually not, like if you look here compared to my head side, my arm is not actually larger than my head. It's because this is closest to you. Whereas if I move it away, now you see how it's more proportionate. You'll see that in my posing videos or um, or in shoots. I'm very, oh, and then look there, that's another tip there is move your arm away from your body. Anyways, that's a different video. So you might prefer this image exposed more or less or more of like a, Ethereal look, totally personal preference. Mm. Mm. Hmm. It's not working. Go on. Hmm. There we go. That's never happened before. Oh, I wonder if this.
program I'm using to speak to you with and put my little face down here in the corner, it might be slowing it down. Um, Adobe software is, in my opinion, the best. I love it. However, it is a beast on your RAM. Um, like it takes up a lot. It takes a lot of juice to run these programs. So maybe the recording is slowing it down a bit, but that's okay. Um, maybe we'll do a little bit of sharpening. I kind of don't like how we lost a little too much shadow though. Once we put up the exposure like that, then maybe I want to add a bit of shadow back in. See there? There would be like a lot of shadow. Very like, ooh, it's like little glowing light in the forest. There would be no shadow. Then we lose a little bit of detail. I think I like it about there. Yeah. Oh, normally I like to add a bit of black in, but I actually kind of like this out. Hmm. There we go. Hmm. I do like that dehaze, but you know what? We're going to do it just around the because that's the part of it I liked. And then just right in this area here where the colors are here, I'll turn this on for you. because That'll be easier for you to see. That you see I've added there. Um, and down here is where I adjust those settings. But again, that'll be, um, way easier to explain in one of my specific videos or courses uh, because if I tried to include that in every video they would be like the longest videos in the world so I'm going to turn that off now I'm just showing you what I'm doing and I'm gonna maybe go oh wait texture slider what Adobe did you add a texture slider this week see this right here this is new Oh, we're gonna have to look at what updates happened this week. Interesting. So now whatever changes I'm making, oh, I actually like it with the clarity down, clarity up, clarity down. Um, but here I'd like to lower the highlights to try to get even a little more, yeah, maybe not. Mm. There we go. There's more contrast, less contrast. I don't know, maybe like that. Done. And again, if I was going to print this image or um, if I decide to use one of these in one of my galleries, like, in, uh, like for sale, um, I will stack them because I want this a little more... Like I want these rays a little more sharp and a little more defined, but this is just to do editing with you. And let's see here. Saturation hue. I want to play with these yellows and sees and sees and sees and see what happens. Oh yeah, like there. Whoa, we're gonna make it super green. A little warmer, which a lot of people like, but again, it I want to like it, but I don't prefer it. Hmm, I kind of like that with more orange in it, actually. Hmm. Not more orange, different tones of orange. I wonder, oh, I need to turn those notifications off. That's bad. All right, let's see. Greens. Oh, yeah, like there's like, woo, crazy greens. Hmm. The greens are very green right now, so I'm going to keep them green. And yeah, there we go. 
I would probably also put this in Photoshop and put some, oh wait, let's see, wait, 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 let's see what that texture layer does. Okay, texture, and now it's under presence. Oh, interesting. Oh, weird, cool. That gives it a painterly effect. Oh, Adobe, you never cease to amaze me. Crazy. Hmm. I like that. Interesting. So there we go. Let's go like this. Here's kind of what it looked like to start, and what it looked like after. Actually, I do maybe want to add some black back in there now that I look at it again. Maybe not that much. I'm such an extreme person. I'm like, oh, I mean, I typically am not in photography, but sometimes with my sliders, I'm like, oh, let's see all the way and all the way. But then that also kind of gives you an idea of what effect you're adding. I just, just out of curiosity, we've pushed this quite a bit of exposure up at the whole stop of light. Neat. Cool. Well, there we go. That's what we're going to do for today. Um, leave any comments down below if you enjoyed this. Please hit a like. That's super appreciated by me and lets me know what you're enjoying. If you enjoy my videos, please feel free to subscribe and if it resonates to you and click that little bell so you get notified when I upload new videos and you'll be the first thing, you'll be the first thing to know. You'll be the first to know um, what content is happening. And uh, I promise I will get rid of these highlights. Although actually it's really good, whatever. I don't really, oh, look at that. I can get rid of them by, right. So, oh, you know what? That's fascinating. So my white truck is right there, oh, a window here, I'm gonna show you. No, yeah, there we go. So see there, now that truck is in the blaring sun and that white is so glaring, it's acting as a reflector. And that is why it is shining this really unflattering thing there. So look, when I block out the light from that truck, there we go, isn't that awesome? It's actually perfect that it happened that way because we're a photography channel. So that's a really good live example of showing you how big of um, a difference your environment can make. And there we go. I've just blocked out the truck. That's amazing. And that's like, I don't know how many feet away. I, I would be totally lying if I guessed. Interesting. So all I had to do through this whole video was not hold my hand here because then the glare is on my hand and my hand looks massive. But look at that, now my hand is taking the glare from that truck. Now it's on my face. Isn't that neat? Cool, well there you go. We also had a lesson about, oh, and then look, it's on my face, wow. We also had a lesson today about blown out highlights and what that looks like and how important your environment is. So amazing. Thanks for joining me. I enjoyed spending time with you and we'll talk soon. Bye for now.